Yeah. You already know what it is, man. It's your boy Laid Back. Back here with another reaction, another review, another episode. Hey. Look, man, you already know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notifications button. And let's go ahead and get into it. So Jay-Z did an interview with New York Times magazine this past week. And in this interview, he sat down with Dean Beckwith from the New York Times. And they talked about a lot of stuff, man. A lot of good, good, good information. So I'm just giving y'all my honest reaction to my first time watching it. I watched it yesterday and I felt like I should do a reaction on it because Jay-Z was talking about a lot of real stuff. He talked about a lot of stuff from his marriage, from his music, to his children, to a whole bunch of things. So first of all like one of the first questions was talking about the song about oj you know what i'm saying and uh but before we even get into that let's just talk about the appearance of jay-z the 46 year old rapper entrepreneur if you th that was the first thing that kind of like struck me about him was his appearance he didn't have a fresh haircut you know his lineup wasn't straight his hair looked kind of nappy you know what i'm saying he didn't have any jewelry on. He wasn't flashy. When he sat down in a chair, in a sofa, he was real relaxed. You know what I'm saying? Like, he looked like an older person. You get what I'm saying? Like an older, mature person that done lived life and that done found some type of inner peace somewhere. So first of all, like like I said, his his demeanor was different, you know? And for me, being a person that's real big on body language, for me, just seeing how he was moving and how he carried himself, how he didn't have all the jewelry, how he didn't had, a, you know, the nice flashy clothes, he meant business. You know what I'm saying? And they say a lot of people that's up there as far as capital, they don't really wear a lot of flashy stuff. They don't really have a lot of jewelry on. They just real like, you know, meek people. So that was the first thing that struck out to me. But then they stopped start talking about the song about OJ and he started breaking down about you know how OJ you know thought pattern and how he wasn't you know trying to uplift the community that he came from that he was actually trying to abandon the community so that was real deep how they started talking about that Jay-Z also said that he feel like he has a responsibility to bring like certain social issues up in his music so it can create a certain type of dialogue for you know society as a whole he feels like dialogue is one of the biggest things that needs to be talked about or brought up so it could be talked about as far as like dialogue about you know racial injustice colin kaepernick you know all these things that that's going on in america right now donald trump all these things should be spoken about in some degree he also talked about kanye west you know how saying like of course we have issues right now it's a little bit of tension but it's nothing that two people that don't have genuine love for each other at the bottom, you know, everything, they got love for each other and that all they need to do is just sit down and talk one day because he know that he probably did things that Jay-Z feel like, I mean, Kanye feel like that, you know, hurt his feelings and vice versa. So they just need to, at the end of the day, sit down and have this dialogue. If you watch the interview, he kept saying dialogue, dialogue, dialogue. He also talks about, you know, in depth about what he want to teach his kids he says like the most beautiful thing in life are the things that's invisible you know love compassion um those type of things that you can't buy you know what i mean like it's something that's intangible that you can't see but you can feel it it means the most to you like he talks about how you know he was living his best life as far as you know materialistic things but also was living in pain at the same time you know talking about the whole marriage with him and beyonce going back and forth with that you know like how he's a great success but then at his home you know it's messed up and he also was talking about how uncomfortable he was with you know him and beyonce was with playing their albums for each other to actually sit there and listen to the situations that they went through and actually hear both sides of the story and deal with it you know what i'm saying like sitting amongst the uncomfortability and how they both respect each other's art to like the highest degree like and also i was saying like how beyonce could have left you know and she didn't saying how like 50 percent or 60 percent of, of most marriages end in divorce you know but she chose to stick it out 
Now, whether you, you know, agree with her sticking it out with Jay-Z or not, that's up to you. But, you know, it seems like it's it, it worked itself out. They sat down, they talked about what happened. And I'm not getting into all that shit because I honestly don't know. But obviously some stuff went down in the relationship and they chose to have a dialogue about it instead of just one person up and up and leaving. He was saying one of the things that stuck out to me is that when the person, like one of the person that, the person that does wrong in a relationship, a lot of times they lead a relationship because they don't want to deal with themselves hurting somebody that they love. So they just lead a whole relationship. You know what I mean? So in this, you got to check out that New York Times um, interview with Jay-Z, man. Very mature Jay-Z. Very open-minded, very compassionate. He talks about how he went to therapy. You know, he talks about, you know, his mom, you know, how she um is a lesbian and how he knew for years. But just now, recently, they just started talking about it and how they went from being good friends to being great friends now. You know, so it's a lot of game in there. He talks about how it's better to find truth than to be the, you know, white, hot, smoking thing right now and you just be a trendy thing and you just leave and go because you really didn't stick to any truth. You just did something that was popping right now instead of cultivating something on your own. So great interview, man. Great interview for up and coming artists. Great interview for, you know, society as a whole to sit there and just really listen to a guy that's lived life for 46 years and came out on the other end very successful, even though he been through public trials and tribulations. You have to respect that at the end of the day, he's still married. He still has his family. They worked it out, whatever the situation was, and they got through it. So big respect to Jay-Z. Some of the words that he was saying, like, you know, it was just like you could just tell he's in a different space right now. And, you know, it's just a great, great interview, man. So like I said, make sure you check out that interview. New York Times. It's on their YouTube page. It's trending right now on YouTube. And make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. And look, man, thank you for watching. Until next time, it's your boy Laid Back. Self-love and positivity, you already know. You. Yeah.